<laughs> Welcome to uh, my second YouTube premiere. Hopefully you guys really enjoy it again. Um, so as you can see, I'm in here typing <laughs> and responding to any questions you guys may have. So if you have questions about Yukon Striker or about my channel or about myself, feel free to comment on the right um, and I'll try and respond to as much as possible. So hopefully you guys really enjoy this because I, I, I kind of really like the concept. I like that I can be in there kind of reacting to the video with you guys and interacting with you more than I currently do. Um, uh, but yeah, let's get right into the construction update. I was there for longer today than I was yesterday, um, and I am exhausted. <laughs> so I got no sleep last night. Um, I was up really late watching horror movies with my friends online and uh, went to bed around 5 a.m. and got woken up early and got myself to the park uh, to film. So uh, I feel like the Shane Dawson of the coaster community right now because I got 118 files of footage today on Yukon Striker uh, being topped off and completed lift hill drop top of the lift, all of that. So hopefully you guys really enjoy this footage because um, it was definitely exhausting getting all the footage. But I say exhausting. I say that in a good way, though. Like I definitely thoroughly enjoyed it. This was a once in the lifetime experience. Well, probably not, to be honest. There'll probably be more coasters to come. Um, but for me, it's definitely like a once in a lifetime or first in a lifetime experience. And I definitely enjoy it. So let's get right into it. So as you can see, they're lifting the uh, turn piece into place here. This is the final turn piece. And then they have one more piece to go in right after this. So just got footage of them installing this. It does not have the catwalks in, uh, on it at uh, as of yet. Um, they're probably in a rush to just get this up. They probably wanted this project done, um, but not not this project, but, you know, the top of the lift drop and lift hill completed on Friday, like we originally discussed. Um, so that went in that went in really quick, actually. And then it looked like they went on a lunch break. So I went on a lunch break. <laughs> so I headed on out and grabbed myself some lunch and then I headed back in and I got the remainder of the lift hill installed. Um, which was phenomenal. That thing was massive, and seeing it floating in the air was pretty impressive. But what's even more impressive is watching these brave souls stand on top of this giant structure that um, doesn't look like it should be stood on um, and uh, bolt this thing in place in high winds. So it was really windy today. Um, it wasn't as cold as yesterday, but it was windy. And uh, actually, right here where I'm filming... I could tell we hit about 35 mile per hour gusts of wind for a good 15 minutes. And I could tell that they uh, probably slightly panicked and held this thing still because it, it was kind of stuck just um, a little lower than this for a good like 10 minutes. Um, so they're probably waiting for those gusts to calm down, which they did. Thank goodness. So the winds calmed down. They started lifting this up. I started cheering because I was like, please don't have to hold this off until Monday. I was like starting to promise you guys that this would be done uh, Thursday and Friday. And I really wanted it to be done Thursday and Friday. I did not want to go through another, oh, like due to weather, this is now delayed again. Um, but yes, this one up, it's installed. It went smoothly as well. In fact, you're about to see the process that they go through to get this final piece of the lift and drop in. It's insane. Uh, the, the, look at these guys. And the funnier part is you're about to see them use the anti anti rollbacks as like almost like a ladder. <laughs> like there's one dude that literally is like clinging on to those for dear life as he bolts in that final piece. It was just really impressive to watch. And again, thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience. The more I document Yukon Striker, the more I learn. Um, in fact, there's lots of people now that reach out to me um for like what's going on on other coaster projects where they should be at and stuff like that and that's that's totally cool and i really enjoy that you guys trust me but understand that i am also an amateur still i don't know everything and lots of people definitely uh still give me advice uh, or correct me when i make a mistake in a video which i will do lots of because i don't know everything about construction i don't know everything about engineering i don't know everything about coasters i'm not you know, one of those 500 credit coaster enthusiast people, <laughs> which is totally fine. I'm learning. But yeah, definitely, um, again, really impressive. I got shots on a different side of the park as well. So you'll see that a little later on, I think in about 
another couple minutes you see those shots i grabbed them from the front end of the park and this thing is impressive so uh this was definitely um where i i started to see how they kind of get this part in so you see them waiting there for this to come down i'll pan up in a second and you'll see that they start adjusting the chains uh, they're not there yet. It's in just a second. So you'll see two guys arrive and they start adjusting the chains to lower just the back end, this back end here of the track piece for it to align perfectly. So yes, this is where they arrive. Um, they're in there and they're starting to release the chains, so like give them slack to lower it. And those two guys will help guide that into place and then they'll bolt it in, um, which was beyond crazy. I do want to touch. So we discovered yesterday that Yukon Striker has a ton of speakers on the top of the lift. Val Raven does not. Um, in fact, Baron, I think, has speakers on the top and it's for to do with theming. So I'm going to come to the conclusion and it's a bold conclusion to come to. But I have a feeling that you're going to have some sort of theming soundtrack play when you get to the top. There's two speakers that overhang the drop as well. If you look closely, you can see them. So you see two speakers overhanging the drop or the... Um, holding break so i have a feeling that's definitely going to be playing some sort of sound effect as you drop there's there wouldn't be really a reason to have them overhanging the drop or um towards the uh the tunnel and the ground if it wasn't to play some sort of sound effect as you're released um so i'm definitely going to make a bold kind of prediction and i'm going to say that the speakers up there probably have something to do with theming um the lift hill speakers are definitely you know the spiel Although spiels aren't always required. Leviathan does not have a lift spiel. Um, for those that are saying, you know, it's a lift spiel, it's required. Um, not all the rides at Wonderland actually have lift spiels. Um, Leviathan does not have one. So that's interesting. Um, although I don't see speakers on Yukon Strikers lift yet. Although not all the parts are installed for the lift. Um, but definitely up there. Uh, everything's installed for the most part from what I can tell. Again, I don't know everything about coasters, but everything looks nice and dandy up there. Um, and again, the speakers are up there. There's some guy um, welding uh, up the lift hill. It looks like he's installing the guardrails for the uh, the staircase, the evac staircase and the maintenance staircase. Um, so that was cool. Uh, you can see him. Uh, and here, look at this dude. He's standing on the anti-rollbacks. Um, <laughs> like, just like it's his normal day job. Like, you know, standing 200 feet in the air on these anti-rollbacks to install this giant piece of metal um, or steel, sorry. Yeah, love life. Uh, if I was up there, I would definitely probably fall and hit every object on my way down um, because that's just the kind of person I am. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. It was so fun covering um, the installation process. So we're about to move on into those other angle shots and then we're going to head into the drone footage. So um, this is where I tried to get as many different angles as I possibly could of Yukon Striker. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. And hopefully you're still following along and uh, chatting with me in the box to the right. Don't forget to give the video a like. Um, and for those of you that aren't on my Patreon yet um, or don't know what my Patreon is all about, i um, still figuring it out myself. But if you head on over to our Patreon um, and subscribe for a dollar a month, you get uh, kind of early access to some of these photos, um, information, and there's going to be more to come too. So for just a dollar a month, you can support the channel on Patreon, uh, Amusement Insiders. Um, it's linked down below in the description. So if you feel want to kind of support the channel, definitely head on over there. If you don't, that's totally cool, too. Um, but yeah, here is some awesome shots of the front gate area. Now, I got some really awesome pictures again, like yesterday, and they're awesome. So they will be released after this video. So I can't wait for you guys to see them. Um, it looks like a, more supports arrived and definitely, I think, two more pieces of track, if not four. So there's either two or four more pieces of track that have arrived and definitely some supports have arrived. So the Immelman will be next week heading on into the zero G roll um, and then heading on into Timberwolf. So the rest of the coaster is going to be a very quick and easy install. Again, this thing is supposed to be done by December sometime. So that's awesome and uh, pretty wicked. <laughs> so uh, can't wait for them to be done. And again, November is a really exciting month. Uh, we'll have a behind the scenes tour coming up in November at some point. So hopefully you guys really enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave the drone footage with some, you know, awesome <laughs> background music for you guys to enjoy. Uh, not much else to talk about yet other than, um, again, I can't see this far up. I'm going to be at the park tomorrow and I'll see what's going on in the Timberwolf area and have that in-person update as I always do. Um, I definitely am going to have something that I'm going to talk about Behemoth tomorrow in my video as well. I saw something today. 
I didn't want to include it in this update because I kind of wanted to push it off to tomorrow because I wanted this to be all about UConn Striker. But there is some interesting developments around Mindbuster and Behemoth that I will share with you guys. I had also caught it on video too, just so you guys don't think I'm crazy. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good weekend. Bye.